So here I am in Eden Editor, uh, and it's actually this map, and this is how the uh, I'm demonstrating the the reality alignment drive. Um, um, it, it, it only works with a, a sort of real world location, so uh, you have to be on a real world map. So this is this is Dover by PWH Bach. I'm in the same clan, PWH. And if I just go to the map, you can see how this is south, um, south coast, southeast coast of the UK. So we've got Dover over there, and we've got Folkestone, um, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, deals up there. So this is, this is a real map. It's a it's a real location, um, real uh, roads, etc. And so um, the the reality alignment drive needs that. It needs a real location. So if you have a look, let's just go into it. So I'll just demonstrate actually what happens when you fire this off. So here I am in um, uh, actually in Armour 3. and But the settings, as you can see, are a very sunny day. Um, what's the time? It's 11 o'clock. And um, that's what the game time and game weather is. So what, what this... Very, very Heath Robinson like tool. Look up Heath, Google Heath Robinson, um, and you'll see what I mean because this is all sort of bits of string and rope and cogs and stuff all sort of tied together the way this works. Now, like I said, clear skies, sunny, uh, 11 o'clock, but the question is, what is it like in uh, Dover right at this moment in the real place of Dover? So, what I want to do is apply the reality of Dover, the real conditions in terms of weather, temperature um, and time uh, to to my um, virtual world. I've got it on a radio button and you can see number one at the top there, activate reality alignment drive, the rad. <laughs> um, uh, so I press it and look what's happened. So aligning with reality, so in the bottom left there you've got some messages. So it talks about it is overcast the temperature is 12.1, which was measured at 5.50 um, this evening, that's now, and there's a little array printed out there as well. But you can see how it's over, overcast, there's, it's now night time, which is, we're getting into night time, which is the, the reality, and there's clouds. So let's look at the time. It is now, now 5 o'clock, and, um, and that's what it's been um, set to. Um, so yeah, so I've aligned um, the reality with this in-game VR, um, the virtual reality, the, 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 the game reality. So, just how, how does it work? How does it work? Let's just press escape on that for a second. So, I'll just bring up this so you can see how, um, let's just refresh this. So this is Dover weather. Um, let me just see what it, what this, what was the temperature? So 12.1 and it's overcast. So just bring that back. So um, yeah, 12, so there is pretty good. 12 and um, uh, yeah, actually it's almost signs of rain there by the looks of things. This uses uh, Inni uh, DB, uh, Inni DB2 and FME, which is a sort of geospatial tool, ETL, sort of extract, transform and load and stuff. It's um, and this is you can download this free FME workbench uh, for these kind of purposes, and uh, you can you can just use it. But you could use a um, uh, if you really wanted to get into it, you could use a Python here and go completely open source. Um, let me just bring up a, a PowerPoint so you get the drift. So what happens is um, I'm using an EDB, uh, an EDB two. Um, and uh, I'm using FME Workbench here to go off to the Open Weather API. So I make a call to the Open Weather API and through the Workbench, uh, which is a scheduled task. You can bring up, I'll bring up the task. So here it is. So here's my Windows task scheduler, and I start this program getweather.bat. Okay. And getweather.bat kicks off my. FME workbench. Uh, there's a little timeout just so I can see it happening on screen. So that kicks off this job, this workbench. So this workbench gets kicked off or whatever the task scheduler does it at. Every 30 minutes seems um, good enough. 
and that writes out to any DB, which is exactly that. It's an any file, any sort of settings configuration file, treating it a bit like a database. Um, well, only in terms you can read and write specific information sections and keys and stuff. But it works um, re really well. And then I have an SQF uh, uh, file, which does all the sort of processing when when the NEDB is populated with the, with the uh, Open Weather Map API. It looks through the NEDB uh, and um, the SQF will read it and say, um, oh, I've got, uh, I don't know, uh, um, it's overcast or, or whatever it is, uh, scattered clouds, um, and uh, and then turn that into uh, ArmorScript. So that's that, and that's a trigger um, with a radio button. So that's the sort of um, job. I've got a slightly different design if you went completely cloud based which would be the better better way of doing it but let's pause on that for a second if we just go back to the workbench so um, uh, in, in the FME workbench um, I'm specify my uh, latitude and longitude coordinates for uh, Dover and, um, and then I fire off to the open weather map transformer the to that API my um, uh, coordinates and get get that Get this description back and actually quite a few other fields you get all this humidity sunrise sun, uh, sunset um, all that sort of thing max temperature pressure so you get it you get a whole load back from, from that which is pretty good uh, I then create a um, attribute um, which is what actually gets written out to the any, any file so you can see it's very any like and let's just bring up the any file there's the contents that's all it contains you see I'm just calling it PWH DB any, so it's Dover info, and then got weather, temp, and the date time. So that that's all I'm putting in there. Um, I, I could, I'm, in the future, I'm, I'm, and actually I've already done it to a degree, tied in some other open um, sources like Open Sky API, so it'll draw a plane at the right sort of altitude and, and flying direction and bearing, uh, and also tie it into the AIS marine traffic stuff, so you can put a ferry on or a ship or something um, around the. Um, coast that sort of thing so it's fully very very ex extendable really um, to, to work with so this this all gets written out you see um, once once that's all written out to this this text file then what kicks off is SQF so um, no it won't win any awards whatsoever for script um, design or layout for that matter um, but it works uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of really teaching myself scripting but but doing this specific project as, uh, to, to, to learn it so I'm sure I'll have um, I'm sure there's much better ways of doing various things in here um, than, um, than, than you know than what I've done here so what, what, what do I do I kind of default what the um, sorry to use any DB2 which is really like I said quite pretty good really uh, you need that mod loaded in EDB2 um, and then you instantiate a new uh, database object which like I said is just an any file then I'm setting my weather conditions to zero, basically to false. Uh, I then read what the weather state is, and then I do a load of, you know, sort of case type switch statements, um, but obviously a load of ifs. Um, and I'm actually going to explode these a lot more to, to put a lot more detail in, but that's why it's just one if after the other. Um, so, you know, if it's cloud, I set cloudy. If it's some rain, I shower. If it's heavy rain, a thunderstorm, or snowy, or mist, or something. And if it's just clear sky, I set sunny to one. And then what I do down here, you see, is just say, well, okay, if I've set, set it to cloudy, then I'll set overcast um, and um, put sort of uh, flat cloud type um, weather uh, cloud system in. Uh, do all this to make an instant change. Um, I, I wish I saw that on the wiki. Um, so that's really helpful. That works great. So you kind of go backwards and then set it all and then come back to the current time. Um, but it's how you make the change instant as far as I'm aware. Um, as, as rain becomes more apparent, so that it's sort of cloudy, shower, rain, and thunderstorm, I kind of up the overcast, so it's 0 0.6, but then I keep it to quite high with eight, um, with shower and rain, and then I set it to full one, so it's heavy rain that. Um, if you want to set rain, you need overcast greater than uh, 0.7. Um, to make rain work and as you can see there I've set rain quite light because it's just a shower rain a bit heavier 
halfway because it's rain and rain really heavy at one um, and the zero ma makes rain turn on immediately okay and then um, and then if it's sunny I completely remove all sort of clouds the overcast setting to, to zero basically clear it uh, and then these these are actually a whole load of um, uh, these are really debugging messages uh, mainly apart from where I set the date time which is R, oh, which is there, yeah. So um, I noticed minutes didn't come through right, actually. So I've obviously done something wrong there. But um, um, so I, I read the hour and the minutes of when the um, uh, of date time, which is um, yeah, what's that? That's, oh, that's the timestamp. There you go. Of that key, date time, and then I set date to it. Uh, this fifth of February, twenty twenty three, is the date of my map. Um, and then there's a few debugging um, statements. So there you go. Um, I can um, uh, obviously, since I've been talking, the, the, the weather probably hasn't changed um, that much. But um, I, I don't have to wait for the scheduler. I can force it to run. So that will run. And then if I just continue back in here and do not not one. Oh, well, it's got a bit darker anyway. Um, so, well, it's six o'clock now, isn't it? So, um, what is, is that correct? Yeah. So, it's six o'clock now. So, it's got a, it's got a bit, a bit darker now. No? So, that's what it's like down in Dover. Anyway, um, I think that's of interest. I learned a lot while doing it, and I'll probably expand it a bit more. But uh, there you go.